Today I'm going to be showing a video that's a little outside my comfort zone. This is the front door to a house. Um, I want to put a storm door on it. However, in order to do that, the frame is recessed back here. So I needed to do some wood buildup to get a flush frame with the house so I could just put on the storm door. So I did it a little bit different than probably most contractors would do. Probably get a little flack for it. But what I did, I wanted to, to just go to the big box stores and just get wood that was available, that was strong, that would last in the weather. So um, the frame was just under, I think, two inches wide. So they had these one by threes that were pressure treated. I wasn't sure how it was going to hold up, but I went ahead and screwed three of them together and as strong as can be, which is good. But now I had a problem where I had grooves in between. So what was I going to do with it? Um, I was thinking just putting wood filler and then sanding it down and then painting it and then making it look nice. But the first wood filler that I used was terrible. It kept popping out of the grooves. Um, it just wasn't what I expected. I seen this product in the store, Bondo Wood Filler. And uh, my background, I'm more of a mechanical and automotive guy and I've used Bondo before. So I said, hey, let me give this a shot. So um, I started on it yesterday and uh, right now the camera zoomed out. You probably can't see the detail, but this is a finished job of the Bondo um, after sanding. And I'm very, very happy. So I figured I'd make a video so you guys could see how good the Bondo wood filler is. It seems very strong. Um, I have some complaints, pros and cons about it. Um, I'll discuss those in this video. I hope this video is going to be helpful for everybody. If so, give me a like, a few comments, um, subscribe, of course, and, uh, you know, have a good discussion about this. So, anyways, let's proceed. So first, I want to show you what I'm working it with here. This is the one by threes. This is the groove that was there. Uh, it just does not look good like this. It looks really cheesy. Um... Hopefully the camera does a good job focusing. Try to get the low light situation. Yeah. Hopefully you get a good look at that and see how it looks. Um, I'm going to go to this side and you can see the final product that I did yesterday. So I went ahead and filled in those grooves with the Bondo. This is actually that last wood filler and how that came out with another patch that I needed to do which I think is terrible but that's the Bondo just to show you the difference pretty unbelievable but this worked out so good that I said yeah I need to make a video of this so this helps other people I'm gonna try to capture the other side of the door um, I'm not sure if it's gonna come out good because of the sun Hopefully the camera's in focus. But yeah, you can see those grooves. And again, there's some previous wood filler. Just did not come out good. So here's the Bondo wood filler that I used. Uh, I really like this product. It's good. Now, what I've learned already, my gripes, it says on the back here that you got to place a three inch diameter circle half inch thick of wood filler on a clean non-porous mixing surface and then basically you put a stripe of the hardener right down it you mix it and then you got about three to five minutes before it thickens up to where it's beyond peanut butter and it's really hard to work with so that's really my gripe um, I did my best in doing it in little shots yesterday but you get anxious with the little amounts that you're doing and you just want to make more and trust me don't do that because what you're going to end up doing is um, basically uh, it's going to get too hard to work with so anyway so as you start here what I recommend doing is getting everything off the top here that you can and give it a good stir in the can because you don't know how long it's been sitting Get everything off the bottom. 
mixed up. Okay, now we can start. So just take a glob of this, put it down. See about how much we have. Maybe a little bit more. Again, you don't want to overdo this because when this dries, if you don't have it on your door or whatever project you're working on, the rest of it's going to go to waste. So, again, work in small amounts and it'll work out better for you. Alright, so I clean that off. I'm going to go ahead and just lean it up there. I'll smear this out. And there we go. So now I'll take the hardener, put a stripe across. That should be enough. So now I'll mix it up. Keep in mind, after you're done doing this, you have that three to five minute window, depending on your temperature outside, on how long this is going to be good to work with. All right, all mixed up, ready to go. So here's the mixture. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on the spatula here and just basically put it on the groove just like you're spackling drywall. You come down like that and just repeat. And you got to work fast because of that three to five minute gap that you got. But this is coming out real nice. If you overdo it, don't worry about it because you could just sand it away. Ain't a big deal. You just, oh. Got a little bit of extra there, but believe it or not, you can chip it off later. Within about 20 to 30 minutes, the stuff is already ready to sand. Which is nice, but working with the 3 to 5 minute time frame is a little bit troublesome. And I kind of wish that was longer and it took about an hour to dry. It would lead to a lot less waste for a big project like this, that's for sure. So again, we're working small batches. As you can see, I don't have much left on my uh, cardboard. But if you do it like this, it'll come out. It'll um, go into the grooves very smooth, and you won't have too much sanding left to do after this. Last little bits going on now. And you can already see that the consistency is changing a little bit. It just looks like that there's sand or something in in the mixture. But that's just it firming up. So just smooth it out when that happens and then repeat the whole process. And that's it. Back. So I wanted to show you what I consider the final product before I start sanding. Um, <clears throat> while you're doing this I don't want you to worry about oh man maybe I put too much or this is coming out like crap you won't believe what the sander is about to do so I just wanted to show you some different areas and different textures this is a good example of how it came out when it was smooth and it was the right mixture not getting too pasty um, but here you could see how it all clumped up it's hard now. It's been probably about 15 minutes. Um, this is all going to sand out very smooth. So, so I just finished my first coat. As you can see, that's the remainder that I had. It basically dried up a little bit. Um, got a little bit nasty to work with on the door. This is what I do. I take a, a flat edge razor blade and I just kind of shave it off of the spatula. As far as the stuff on the cardboard, I just give it a good scrape off.
when you mix up the next batch, you really don't want any of this in your mix, otherwise you're going to have chunky stuff. Alright, after that's done, you're ready to go from mixing another batch. So this is dried for probably a good hour, so it's ready to sand. Um, the kind of rig that I have for sanding, got 80 grit sandpaper on an orbital. And then I have this hooked up to a shop vac with a dust collector. It really helps with the uh, the sand that comes off of this, or the sawdust, or whatever you want to call this. Um, so anyways, go ahead and give this a look and you'll see how it comes out. It's good stuff. Here we go. So hopefully the lighting is right, but you can see how smooth this is, and there are no gaps from the wood anymore. It came out really good. Up at the top, i got to work it a little bit more with the sander, no big deal, but here is where I came from. Let's see if I can get a close-up on it. And that's what I went to. So I can't say enough good about this uh, this Bondo wood filler. It really does the job good. I wanted to take a minute to just show you guys <clears throat> when you're sanding it comes out really smooth and you can see this light color right here which is pretty much the final product after you sign it, s the, sand it but while you're sanding it if you could see down here it's got two colors this is a good way to tell how much you need to sand to get a perfectly smooth surface and make it look uniform Make sure you keep your eye on that. You can see how it looks down there, how messy, and how the sanding came out. It's pretty good. So hopefully you can see this. This is the final product after sanding. I'm going to have to get a little bit up here with the hand sander. Not a big deal. But as I go down, you can see how smooth it looks and uniform. Now I don't have that gap. Came out pretty good. Yeah. Right now with the sun behind me, you can see a good shot of how smooth it came out between the grooves. This is where I originally had the wood mounted to the, uh, the door frame. But my plan is to just put white silicone there and paint over it. But everything else came out really good. My next step was to put oil-based primer on that wood. Right now you can see it's coming out pretty good. I don't see any uh, any big marks of the wood after that bondo was on there. So it's looking good so far. Next step after this I'm going to put down exterior latex paint and we'll see how it comes. So here's the shot of the door after a coat of primer and two coats of exterior latex paint. If you have a good look at it, you can see that this part right here, which was originally into three boards, came out perfectly smooth. You can't even tell that, um, that there was any filler done to it or anything like that. Very happy about the results. Here's the other side. Hope your light's good again. I'll try to get a close up. Alright. Third coat on the door is done. Painted the bottoms of the metal sills too, or the side windows, whatever you want to call them. 
um, came out really, really good. So I think that I'm going to install a storm door now. Let's see how it goes. So here's the final product. So it came out very, very good. Um, I put on one of those screen doors that, or storm doors that have the screen so you can slide down the glass. I'll go ahead and get a closer look so you can see how it came out. Right now I think the light's good for this, but it's all uniform and um, no bulges, no nothing. It came out really nice. So I highly recommend the Bondo wood filler. And uh, I hope you enjoy it if you use it too. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Leave some comments. And um, good luck on your next project. Subscribe please. Thank you.